right. Good morning, everyone. Great to have you join us in worship this morning. Good morning. Our Advent journey begins. Advent, a time of preparation and waiting, a time set aside to reflect on our relationship with God, God's gift of a Savior, and our need for a Savior. What does it mean to prepare our hearts and minds for the gift 
of a savior. What does it mean to be in a time of waiting, waiting for God's kingdom to come fully? How will we choose to move through this time of Advent? I am grateful that we will be moving through this time of preparation and waiting together. For those who may not know, my name is Tom Abbott, and I'm blessed to be one of the pastors here at First Presbyterian Church in Salida, Colorado. I have the great gift of sharing that pastoral role with Hillary Downs, and together with our gifted musicians, we will be leading this time of worship. Just a few things about our life together. A session at its meeting on Tuesday decided that we would continue to worship together only online this Sunday and next Sunday. Then we will revisit our situation, paying attention to the infection rate in our community. Please be checking your email and the website and calling the church to make sure you are aware of our present worship situation. As you know, all kids and youth meetings are on hold at the moment as we support all attempts to keep in-person school a possibility for our community. Advent devotionals are out on the table in the hallway outside the sanctuary. You're welcome to come and pick those up at any time. They're a great way to prepare for this time of Advent. On December 13th, the session is called a congregational meeting for the purpose of setting the terms of call for the pastors and electing elders for session and people to serve on the nominating committee. We will be having the congregational meeting by Zoom between the two worship services. We need 50 people to have a quorum for that meeting, so please put that on your calendar and be looking for the Zoom link to arrive uh, to you by email. If you happen to read through the newsletter, you know that in October, we were able to pay off the mortgage of the building. That is amazing news. Thank you for all of the ways that you have helped make being debt-free a reality. On December 13th, Mike Orill will be preaching, and we will be celebrating being debt-free with a mortgage burning at each of the services. Please plan on being with us on Sunday morning, December 13th, for both of these important events in our life together. Well, this season of preparation and waiting, we're going to be considering stories of different people involved in the Christmas story. Today, we consider the story of Zachariah, Elizabeth, and John. In particular, we want to consider how their story is impacted by hope and joy. As we think about that, listen to the prayer that we know as Psalm 80. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. And let's continue to enter into worship and let's pray. Gracious God, on this Thanksgiving weekend, we recognize that though we feel lack in these days of a pandemic, we also have a tremendous amount to be thankful for. We give thanks for the abundance we enjoy for the freedom that we enjoy, for our homes, for our families, for the stability of our nation. It isn't all perfect, and we are far from perfect, but we are blessed and we are grateful. God, forgive us our selfishness. 
for those times when we seek only our own way, for the times when out of anger we refuse to see our neighbor as beloved by you. Heal our broken hearts, God, and set us free and right again. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who came to live among us and to show us your way of love, who brought us salvation. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, um, verses 5 through 25. So let's listen to God's word for us as we find it there today. During the rule of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest assigned service in the regiment of Abijah. His name was Zechariah. His wife was descended from the daughters of Aaron. Her name was Elizabeth. Together they lived honorably before God, careful in keeping to the ways of the commandments and enjoying a clear conscience before God. But they were childless because Elizabeth could never conceive, and now they were quite old. It so happened that as Zechariah was carrying out his priestly duties before God, working the shift assigned to his regiment, it came his one turn in life to enter the sanctuary of God and burn incense. The congregation was gathered and praying outside the temple at the hour of the incense offering. Unannounced, an angel of God appeared just to the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was paralyzed in fear. But the angel reassured him, don't fear, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Elizabeth, your wife, will bear a son by you. You are to name him John. You are going to leap like a gazelle for joy, and not only you, many will delight in his birth. He'll achieve great stature with God. He'll drink neither wine nor beer. He'll be filled with the Holy Spirit from the moment he leaves his mother's womb. He will turn many sons and daughters of Israel back to their God. He will herald God's arrival in the style and strength of Elijah, soften the hearts of parents to children, and kindle devout understanding among hardened skeptics. He'll get the people ready for God. Zechariah said to the angel, Do you expect me to believe this? I'm an old man, and my wife is an old woman. But the angel said, I am Gabriel, the sentinel of God, sent especially to bring you this glad news. But because you won't believe me, you'll be unable to say a word until the day of your son's birth. Every word I've spoken to you will come true on time, God's time. Meanwhile, the congregation waiting for Zechariah was getting restless, wondering what was keeping him so long in the sanctuary. When he came out and couldn't speak, they knew he had seen a vision. He continued speechless and had to use sign language with the people. When the course of his priestly assignment was completed, he went back home. It wasn't long before his wife, Elizabeth, conceived. She went off by herself for five months, relishing her pregnancy. So this is how God acts to remedy my unfortunate condition, she said. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
case you're not sure who that was playing the piano, that was Brennan King. Um, thanks, Brennan, for playing today. I don't know about you, but I love to sing. I always have. A vast majority of the singing I have participated in has been here in worship. For me, I don't know what is more painful, not being able to gather in person for worship or not being able to sing together in worship. When we enter a familiar season in the church year like Advent, music is perhaps even more central to our time together. For me, I have to go back to before being born, probably, to have a first Sunday of Advent where I did not at least hear, if not sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. I imagine many of you miss singing as much as I do. This Advent, we will be considering different characters from the Christmas story. Today, we'll consider Zechariah, Elizabeth, and John. Then we're going to consider Mary, then Joseph, and finally the shepherds. Each Sunday, we will take a bit of time to consider how hope and joy play a part in the lives of each of these characters and their role in the Christmas story. Today, we consider the story of Zechariah, Elizabeth, and John. I think four of the seven verses from O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, there are seven. You probably haven't sung them all, but there are. <laughs> I think four of those verses speak to their life experience as well as our life experience. Of course, we all know the first verse. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Zechariah and Elizabeth lived in the area that we now call Israel. But they felt like captives and exiles, even though they were at home. At this moment, on different levels, we may share those feelings of captivity and exile. Zechariah and Elizabeth felt like captives of the Roman Empire, particularly the local king, King Herod. This is the Herod who will have the children killed when he learned of the possible birth of a Messiah for the Jews. This Herod is considered one of the true evil people of human history. He was a tyrant. He was brutal. He cared for no one other than his own rise to power and keeping that power at any cost. Killing children was nothing if it meant keeping his power. Way too often, humans respond to the possibility of losing power through terrible actions. We could tick off country after country that presently knows this very reality. Ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. Zechariah and Elizabeth lived in a time of great oppression. They were oppressed politically, economically, religiously. It was a time difficult to have hope, a time difficult to have joy. To top it off, even though Zechariah and Elizabeth lived faithfully and both had priestly pedigrees, they had been unable to have children, a situation that brought cultural scorn upon their marriage. In the midst of all of these varied life plagues, an amazing moment happened in Zechariah and Elizabeth's life. Zechariah was chosen to offer the sacrifice of incense at the temple and in the Holy of Holies. As a local priest, this privilege only happened once in a lifetime, if ever. O come, thou wisdom from on high, who orderest all things mightily, 
to us the path of knowledge show and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Zechariah, after a lifetime of waiting for his moment to enter the Holy of Holies, to enter that space thought to be the very dwelling place of God Almighty. In that moment, he was no doubt filled with hope and joy and wonder and awe. But he nor Elizabeth nor anyone else could imagine the events that were about to unfold. As one verse of the carol states, Zechariah was about to be filled with wisdom from on high and the knowledge of a path impossible to conceive from his earthly perspective. As Zechariah was burning the incense, Gabriel, an angel of the Lord, came and stood by him. Even though Zechariah had spent his life dreaming and anticipating what might happen during this moment in the Holy of Holies, None of that prepared him for an angel, a messenger from God to show up. We're told that Zechariah was paralyzed with fear. As we have discussed, fear paralyzes us from taking action. Fear paralyzes us from having faith. Fear paralyzes us from loving. Fear paralyzes us from having hope. Fear paralyzes us from experiencing joy. Fear paralyzes us from living into the path that God has for us. Every messenger from God, including Jesus, states, do not fear. Through Advent, we usually boldly sing, Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. But are we truly open to God and the ways of God entering our lives? Do we rejoice in the truths of God's kingdom and the path they bring to our lives, or are we paralyzed by the thought of actually living into the path God places before us. As Gabriel lay out the path God had for Zechariah and Elizabeth, Zechariah's paralysis manifested itself as unbelief. Zechariah, the old faithful priest, the one who had waited a lifetime to be in the Holy of Holies, could not believe, even in that astounding moment, in the power of God. Zechariah's ability to be hopeful and live with joy was paralyzed by his fear. Zechariah needed to sing and remember, O come thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Zechariah's fear and paralysis led to muteness. For the next nine months, Zechariah would be unable to speak. For all of us, paralysis often manifests itself in an unwillingness to see truth and speak truth. We are told that when Zechariah entered the Holy of Holies that the people outside were praying for him. Then we are told that that same crowd knew Zechariah had seen a vision or had some encounter with God when he came out from the Holy of Holies. They could tell that something had changed in his life even though he was still paralyzed with fear. Now, at this point in the story, at the end of the section that Hillary read, we don't know how Zachariah's life would be changed by his encounter with Gabriel. Would his hope and his joy increase? Would his paralysis dissipate? We are told in that section 
that Elizabeth, on the other hand, was ecstatic. She couldn't believe her good fortune. She couldn't believe the blessings of God being poured out upon her. Oh, come, thou day spring. Come and cheer our spirits by thy advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. Hope and joy come when with God's Spirit's help we push aside our paralysis and allow ourselves to rest in the truth of God's advent, the truth that God's Spirit is Emmanuel, always with us. God is here. God is present. We are never alone. Each of us has gloominess in our lives. We have just gone through a holiday week when we would typically be gathering with our family, spending time with friends, but instead we were isolated. We hope this pandemic has an end sooner than later, but we don't know. As news from around the world filters down to us, we realize that tremendous violence is being carried out against vulnerable people groups right now. We continue to hear of loss of life and devastation from the hurricanes in Central America. Our own country is experiencing a cultural divide that seems to be ripping at the very fabric of our society. Some of us are dealing with health issues that are weighing us down, and others of us know fresh and painful grief. The gloominess is real and can be weighty. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Our hope and joy rests in the reality of God, not in the brokenness of our human frailty and our human cultures. In Luke's telling of the gospel story, the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth is interrupted. It's interrupted by the story of Mary, whose story Hillary will help us consider next week. But after Mary's encounter with Gabriel, Gabriel came to Mary as well, we read this. When Elizabeth was full term in her pregnancy, she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives, seeing that God had overwhelmed her with mercy, celebrated with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and were calling him Zachariah after his father. But his mother intervened. No, no, he is to be called John. But they said, no one in your family has that name. They used sign language to ask Zachariah what he wanted him named. Asking for a tablet, Zechariah wrote, his name is to be John. That took everyone by surprise. Surprise followed surprise. Zechariah's mouth was now open, his tongue loose, and he was talking, praising God. A deep reverential awe settled over the neighborhood and in all that Judean hill country people talked about nothing else everyone who heard about it took it to heart wondering what will become of this child clearly God has his hand in this <laughs> Zachariah's mouth was now open his tongue loose and he was talking praising God it took nine months but Zachariah's paralysis from fear eventually transformed to praise, hope, and joy as he embraced the truth that God was with him and with Elizabeth and with all creation. As the final verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel states, O Come, desire of nations, Bind all peoples in one heart and mind. Bid envy, strife, and discord cease. Fill the whole world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, 
O Israel. As we learn to trust that God is with us, that God is Emmanuel, then our hope and joy can grow out of that great truth. The same truth that Zechariah and Elizabeth found long ago. When we try to base our hope and joy on something other than Emmanuel, we will always be disappointed. Hope and joy spring from the truth of Emmanuel, that God is with us. The story of Zechariah ends with him breaking into song. At the end of his song, he sang, By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Friends, let us be people who embrace the truth that God is with us and let us allow God's presence to be the source of our hope and joy. This Advent, let us truly sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen. As we reflect on Zechariah and Elizabeth's story and how it connects to our story, let us spend time in God's presence knowing that God is with us as the band comes and leads us in song. Amen.
let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, as we enter this season of Advent, we recognize that this whole year has felt like one long Advent. We have been living in darkness and longing for your coming to save for a long time now. So today we cry out like your people have for thousands of years. Come, Lord Jesus. And we put before you all that is on our hearts and our minds. God, as we hear of acts of violence around our world, our hearts break at the evil that a person can inflict upon another. So we pray for your spirit to prevail in these places, that people's lives would be protected, and that your light would break into hearts that are so dark. May your peace reign. May your justice and your mercy reign. God, as the coronavirus continues to rage around our world and as it continues to grow in our own county, we pray, Lord, for an end. We continue to give thanks for all of our healthcare workers, many of whom are exhausted. We pray for strength and encouragement for their weary spirits. We pray that you would protect their health as they seek to take care of ours. We pray that you would provide them with everything they need to do their jobs well. And God, as we see the grim statistics that right now someone in our United States is dying every minute from COVID, we pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones, whose families will be missing someone here at the holidays. God, may your comfort and your peace be upon all those who grieve. God, we pray for those close to us who are struggling with illnesses right now. We pray along with Marilyn Bolden for her friend, Marilyn, in Arizona, who's undergoing a stem cell transplant. We pray for that transplant to do what it's supposed to do, that her body would mend and heal well. And we pray for Marilyn and for John as they go to provide care for their friend. God, we lift to you today Margaret and Beverly and Robert Parker. We pray that you would be near to them in their illness, covering them with your peace and comfort and the reassurance of your presence. And we pray that you would bring healing to their bodies. God, we lift to you today those who are struggling with chronic disease or with pain. We lift to you those who are anticipating or who are recovering from surgery. We give thanks, God, for our bodies, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by you, and we entrust them to your care. God, for all those these days who are struggling with loneliness, we pray for your spirit to be a felt presence and a friend. For all those who are struggling with the complications of living in relationship, we pray for you to smooth the tangled ways. For all those who are struggling and anxious about making ends meet and about paying the bills, we pray for your provision. God, here in Advent, we wait for the light of your coming. We trust you. We put our hope in you and we turn towards your light. And we continue in prayer with the prayer that your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily, daily bread, bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our debts, as, as we forgive our debtors. Our debtors. And lead, and lead us, us not, not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the, power and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. As we begin our Advent journey, let us, 
like Zechariah, overcome our paralysis, our paralysis due to fear, so that we can fully know and live into the truth that God is always with us. To God be the glory, to the earth be peace, to Christians be courage, and to all people be hope. The peace of Christ be with you all. Blessings on your week and on your journey. Amen.